The big questions that are stated in the little text for this panel are, do both sides profit from European-African music collaborations? Do international music projects expand audiences? And how do German-African music corporations foster intercultural understanding? Now, these are very big questions and very far-reaching questions. And um, my personal question for this panel is based um, on your specific experiences. And uh, I would like to unpack together, reflect on your specific projects, and hopefully by the end bring together our different experiences, your different experiences and knowledge to become a bit clearer about what it takes to make a successful musical corporation. And um, I'm particularly happy that we have the different perspectives here with a South African musician, a Ghanaian musician, a German musician who works a lot with African music, and also a German institution that works with both. Um, why do people make music together in three sentences? Lali. <laughs> Uh, good day. Uh, three sentences, uh, sure. But basically, what I can say is. Uh, it's just the icebreaker question. <laughs> yeah. It's uh, basically why people uh, make music together is like why people have to be friends, why people have to talk to, talk to each other, why people have to love each other. And in this case, in this instance, is uh, basically the world. It looks big, but it's not that big. But if we make music together, it even becomes smaller. Okay, yeah. thank you, Max. Why do people make music together? It's easy to answer. It's about to make people happy all around the world. And also we make, of course, music as musicians to make ourselves happy as a group, have the experience to create something together and share this with the audience. So it's about, I call it an energy bubble to create where everybody can enter and can be inside and enjoy it a short period of each one's lifetime. Okay, so you're saying it's a good way for people to spend time together? Yes, it's a <laughs> music is a very sensible moment in lifetime for everybody. Because music is the art of time, and if you play music, you share time with each other. Okay. And you give, you give a certain beauty to time. Thank you. Guy Wan. Why do people make music together? Ti ti bo ti bono nerva de na la tavale. Yon yon ma de na la tavale. La na tavale de na. Aha. Ye tem po ya. First ye tem po ya. Thank for the question. The Can you speak up a little bit? Yoma yoma ansi la. Yoma ka ahla nerva zorma. Ba te nerva la bataba ta nongra taba zabra han yet la zabra yoma ta mbate zabra la kan zabra bala inga chot man bi hinate yoma an soma so yoma ka ago ndi simbal first of all first of all is thanking for the question and he said making music together he think that the music is the way that make people happy and Sometimes when there is some difference, like uh, war or something coming, when you make music, music can by by music you can send a message and people will be understanding. So we think that music, making music together, is the way to live together and to share culture also. It's about communication as well. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, Federica. Why do people make music together? 
Oh, good question. I'm not a musician, <laughs> but I think that to make music together is some way of communicating. It's a way of communicating in a universal language. Even if you make different kinds of music, you can communicate somehow. Even if you don't speak the same, you don't have the same grammar, the same rhythm, the same, yeah, the same kind of music. It's understandable. It's something that's crossing borders, that's crossing cultures. And I think that's very unique. Okay, thank you. Uh, we will also later on in this session see some stunning photographs that Max has taken from his various um, musical cooperation, cooperations in Ghana. Um, the poet rapper and producer Black Cracker in a recent interview said the three sets of people who should collaborate are military strategist and amusement park designers, laser light controllers and southern US Baptist preachers, and soup kitchen fundraisers and porn stars. Now, um, this may seem a little bit far-fetched because we're talking about musical corporations here, but we're talking in the content or in context of cooperations between musicians and institutions. So, um, I would like you to all come up very quickly as well <laughs> with your ideal dream cooperation in the world that you'd like to see. It can include yourself, but it can also not include yourself. My ideal dream cooperation that I would like to see is of the Angolan DJ, DJ Snobia, together with uh, the Berlin-based um, uh, synthesizer distributor, Schneider's Büro. That's my um, dream cooperation and I would like to see them because DJ Snobia works with the sounds of these old synthesizers but he works with them on computers and I would like to see him work with the real synthesizers. Klaale, do you have an idea? <laughs> uh, cooperation. Basically, first what I can say is that uh, I would love uh, to see mostly, you know, the indigenous, the more deeper indigenous music of, of all the countries in the world. For instance, if, uh, am I there? For instance, let's take uh, Swazi music, indigenous Swazi music, which we call Amahubo. Uh, it's, it's hard to explain in English because in English I'm going to say hymns and it's not hymns, just hymns, because hymns, people are going to say, oh, it's church music. But let me rather say the, the, more to, the, the, the traditional classical music of the indigenous people anywhere in the world. Let's say we take Swazi traditional classical music and we mix it with uh, Japanese traditional music. Both artists, uh, or maybe we take a, a Norwegian traditional classic, classical music, we put them together, we see, we put them together, and right there, we can have a synergy of the music. Because if you look at the South, uh, on the traditional music, especially the traditional classical music, you look at... So the Nguni music in South Africa, you look at the Indian music, you look at the Chinese and the Japanese, there is a link in the scales of the music. You can see that the, these people are coming from the same pot, but then the difference is in the geographical uh, positions and uh, character, characters wherever they are. For me, the world, from that point of view, if we can have more Co collaborate. Can, can I call it collaborations? Of course, you can call it whatever makes sense. To uh, you. Collaborations. Then, for it starts from there because at the same time, uh, we are composers and uh, and all that stuff. But then we go too much in front of the music that we think that uh, we always have an idea, but we forget that all these ideas come from a certain a, a certain space, and we leave behind some roots that we know we're not supposed to be leaving behind then for me those kind of those types of cooperation or, or collaborations are more essential okay thank you so you're saying you'd like to foreground what's in the musical material of uh, traditional or composed music definitely of different countries uh, and not to take more time of you just to <laughs> you, we can have uh, even on a more contemporary 
uh, world have uh, you, you can musicians and and fine artists that kind of a collaboration it helps maybe later we can expand we can that. chat about that more specifically exactly uh, max your dream cooperation right. anything in the world could be an ice cream company with a ballet dancer if you wanted i i choose two musicians which i wish in my dreams always have a jam session together it would be Grandmaster Charlie Parker with Grandmaster Johann Sebastian Bach. Maybe one day it will happen. Why? Uh, but in a different place. Because I admire both very much and they have very much in common, actually. In the ways of composing? Or in the th way of creating melodies and lines. And I think they would just fit perfectly together. Okay. Interesting, thank you. Friederike. Very difficult questions. <laughs> I, I can't say that I really have an ideal kind of partnership or collaboration in my head right now. I think what would be interesting would be to turn it around maybe and to have some more traditional European music collaborating with very urban, very, um, very contemporary African music. Mm -hmm. I would find that interesting because okay. normally it's the other way around. Um, yeah, but otherwise, I'm all for collaborations in general. Okay, just flipping the stereotype around and play yeah. with it. Okay, yeah, thank you. Guy one, Vincia, what would be your dream cooperation? Okay, the market max tamawakan. to they can turn a blend to young Lawane to the Panga Pato Bonacal. They mamma walk Kalaman and they sound, Manaka me young Yomala. But mam ham me the bat, Ben Market, Mamma, you call to Savazan with a ban baramala, Manong by Yelly. But Manka Bukala, so Toba, Titting La Calalat and now one sink a mina, the Indian Balacala. Let Mammy a bubble and Catara Pangala to England, while the Calawayan never parted. That's all he said. For him, his dream is his first time to, uh, to his first time. He doesn't know a lot of musicians from Germany, but for his first time playing with a group, he wished that he could play with any group of Germany, and that is his wish. Yeah, for him himself. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. That sounds yeah. like a feasible dream. Yeah. <laughs> Something that can be realized. Yeah. Um, there are so many different ways to make music together. And we're talking about a very particular way of making music together. It's cooperating, collaborating. And uh, what makes that different to any of you um, from playing in a band together or just playing a paid gig together with somebody in a band, or um, jamming together, or teaching. Um, what is different when we talk about collaborations or cooperations? Klali, you teach. What, what is the difference between teaching and cooperating? Is there one? <laughs> I'm always the first one in the difficult questions. No, oh, oh. <laughs> no it's cool. I like. Uh, so that I can breathe easy after. Uh, as a teacher, I think, or rather, from both ends, it's, it's very interesting because a teacher-student relationship, it's easy. It, it starts easy because uh, it's, at first, is the student availing, the students availing themselves to the art then as a teacher, I have to make sure that the person coming in front of me, do they have the mobility uh, to be able to continue 
with the art. Then the, the, the relationship, then there and there, it starts on from me showing then the student. Mostly they, they suck information from me. But then I am not looking forward to them at the end playing like me. For me, I'm just a, a door opener of what they may have. But then with the collaboration, it's, a, it's two minds put together, a synergy of, of, of two souls or two minds coming from different places and uh, coming together to brew a, a certain beer or a certain juice or, set, or, or to cook certain food. Uh, what comes out of that, it's not necessarily Tlale's music, uh, the other person playing Tlale's music or Tlale playing the other person's music. Uh, what comes out of there, it's the, the, the two ideas or many ideas coming from the two of us or three of us, it's uh, creating that one component, which is uh, beautiful, I guess. Okay, so I think it's a good moment to start talking specifically about uh, cooperations. You um, uh, are touring or recently toured with the South African very established fine artist, William Kentridge. Can you tell us a little bit about that collaboration? I'm very curious. <laughs> yes, uh, we've been uh, touring, We've been working together with different, with William Kentridge for about five years now with, with other different musicians and uh, singers, dancers. Uh, him as a, as a, I can't say he's a fine artist only. He's very, he's very open. Uh, installations. And installations and all that. But the most beautiful thing working with him is that he's open to to ideas, but not ideas which are typical that anyone can just walk on, you know, not like normal ideas, but he's looking for something beyond. Uh, Specific, interesting, artistic exactly. propositions. Yeah. Like in the production which we have right now with him, each, mu each artist who is there is not just a normal artist. Actually, we call them the mad ones. Okay. <laughs> Are you part of the mad ones? Mm, I guess so, because I'm in there. Because uh, in the normal, uh, in the normal circles of the, of the respective arts, each kind of the of those artists in the in the production, uh, those who are looked at. Uh, they have an acquired taste in, the, in, in, in their arts and all that. But then working with someone with, like William Kentridge, he's another mad one himself. But then collaborating with him, it, uh, what it does, it, it brings the be actually the best in, in each one of us. Actually, the music created the, or the art being created in that it's not just a Kentridge work. It's, it's, all, it's all thoughts and souls put together. Are you to saying bring that, you, that you work as catalysts for one another? Did you bring things out in one another that wouldn't uh, be there otherwise? Basically, what happens... Why can't I hear myself now? You, okay. I can hear you very well. Okay. Basically, what happens... It starts with an idea, a certain idea. Mm. Then everybody comes up with a, an avenue of, of, of their idea into that idea. Then there's a music director who puts it, who, who makes sure that all these ideas into that idea, they form uh, a certain object. So basically, Kentridge has this idea and uh, the music director puts it together, but everybody has an input in making sure that this baby grows up to be a strong. Oh, sounds yeah. very beautiful, thank you. Max, you seem uh, to work with music very intensely on different levels. You, you traveled around Ghana to familiarize yourself with court music there, and um, you also seem to read a lot of uh, ethnomusicological uh, literature, or, yeah? <laughs> yeah. So, um, how does that play out? that you have a particular type of knowledge about 
Ghanaian court music, for example, and then meet young urban music producers, and uh, they have a different type or taste of knowledge. All the battery is on. Hello, hello. <laughs> First, about cooperate with somebody is a lot about define values. So the first step is always, of course, to try to learn what are the values of the person you cooperate with. Secondly, you have the chance to become aware of your own values more clearly. And I'm actually very happy when, when, when you asked the first question, what is music all about? And Why do I people said, make music together? Make people happy and he doesn't understand English and he gave the same answer. So I think we both have the same value. So we cooperate very well, I guess. So we still continue and have uh, many plans for the future and continue to record music and stuff like this. And I think it's all because we, from the beginning, there was a kind of, of, of frequency. There was no chance to, to, to communicate really, but from the first moment we start to make music, it happens. Okay. And this, when you have this feeling, then you continue a cooperation. Of course, sometimes you start and it doesn't feel so, so you maybe don't continue. Mm -hmm. So maybe this is a good moment to look at the photographs that you brought to talk yeah. a little bit more specifically about your um, uh, activities in Ghana. They're up on the screen now, you can see them. Would you like to comment a little bit, maybe walk up, or can you see them well? Yes, I see them. This was my first trip to the northern part of Ghana, and this is King Mawine. We didn't start to cooperate yet. We had just a sh brief meeting, and I filmed him and his music just to have a document about him. But in November, we will play in his hometowns, hometown, Sebila, and we will have a spontaneous concert with also the Frafra musicians and 12 musicians from Germany, which will travel all through Ghana. Sounds like a big um, logistic effort. We can talk about that later a little yes. bit if you want. <laughs> this is Alok Ohoyonas. He's a good friend of Gawan. Gawan actually introduced me to him. He's a gospel singer from the Bolga Tanga area. And we released one song recorded with him on Philophone Records. And this was the recording session. So you see the microphone and you see a half Jesus. So it was actually in the church his own church, not his own church, the church where he is he's leading his choir. And we recorded with two of his gospel singers, a uh, Fra Fra gospel song. This is the recording session again. You see the whole space, the church, same session. And this is now guy one on the funeral, also the first trip I went there. And the Kologo is traditionally played just all alone and singing. And, and the Kologo singers, they're very important for the Frafra culture because they, we talked about values. They actually sing about values, about experiences, and they are kind of the, the philosophers of the, of the culture. So they, they teach the people by singing the music so mostly is in, in, a, in, in, in the context is funeral, wedding, or if, if they baptize a child. And they play continuously for three hours. I had an experience with Gawon and singing, singing, and the people, I didn't understood, of course, anything, but just the reaction of the people was so huge on some of the words that that they have to be they have to have a heavy meaning 
This is also on the same funeral. Same funeral. This is Garwan's family. So you see on the left side the sister, the mother. I think the one was the uncle. And then myself and Garwan. Here's Garwan in action. Garwan in action again. This is a totally different world now. This is right in the jungle, more in the southern part of Ghana. And this is Ralph Kakari. He's a famous high-life musician. He and his band, or the band he played in, it was not actually his band. It was a band of Dr. K. GRC. They had a huge, huge success in 74 with a record called CG High Life, which was the first record ever produced in Ghana, which earned gold. And actually this record, a friend of mine played to me, and this was the reason I bought one week later my first ticket to Ghana, because I was so impressed by this, and I didn't understood anything what they were doing. I was just confused what rhythmically was going on there, so I said, go down and find out what this music, how does this music works. This is Winne, he's from, also from Bolgatanga. He actually introduced me to Garwan. I met him also in the south and he's a singer. And this is, was a solo recording session we did in the hotel room in Kumasi. This is Roy X. Roy X is the son of Ebo Taylor. His real name is Jimmy Taylor. He's a rapper. We did also two releases with him so far on Philophone Records. He is from the coastal region from Cape Coast. This is Bola. Bola is one of, they say, boys of Garwan. Garwan teached him how to play the Kologo. And he is quite well known in, in the Western world because the, the American company Awesome Tapes from Africa, two years ago they released an album by him. This is myself in, in Kumasi doing the first jam sessions with Frafra musicians with Western instruments. This is a drummer who played there. He's also from Cape Coast, from the coastal region. And he will be part of, of our tour in November. And he will also come next year to Germany for, for some concerts. And we just played a tour through Ghana, and he was also on the drums. We played a tour with four gospel singers and three Kologo players and two drummers from the south and five musicians from Germany. We had six concerts all over the country this July, organized by Gawan and his people. This is Agongo. He's also a master on the Kolo of the Kologo. He joined us also in, in July and he will join us in November again. This is one of the gospel stars, Anna Bougre. We did recordings with him, but not released so far. This is Linda, also a very great gospel singer. She Thank you. And this is Gawan in Berlin when he, he was here last year for two weeks for do first recordings. Is here in the studio. This is our studio in here just around the corner, Schlesische Straße. This is now the tour we did in July. This is the rehearsal. There you see on the Right side, Ato from Cape Coast, the drummer you saw before. And this is Claudio, Bastilla and Jason. They live here in Berlin and they joined us for, for the horn section. Max, maybe at this point I can ask you, how do you finance these tours? This tour is financed by the Bundeskulturstiftung. They have to turn for the whole project will happen uh, in, the main project will happen in November. This was kind of test run a pilot tour. pilot to see how the cooperation works 
give the chance that the Fra Fra musicians get familiar with our way to make music, that our musicians get familiar in the way how they do music, have some concerts, see how like the infrastructural site is organized and what we have to do. This was this July, there was a, like a, a small version of the November tour will happen in soon. Yeah, rehearsal room, a tour again. So this was the first concert and this was for the Bongo chiefs. Right there is the, the main chief from Bongo and all the other chiefs from the area. And this was a very big venue where like around 2000 people showed up. This is the same, the same concert. Okay. Here Gawan getting ready. This was the second concert, this was in Bolgatanga at, at the Jubilee Park in the night time. This was the third concert in, in the next bigger town to Bolgatanga, Navrongo. Yeah, maybe um, we can skip ahead to a picture that has Guy One in it and then we can have that as a backdrop for him to talk a bit more specifically about his instrument. Is there another one? I don't know the order yet, maybe. Yeah, let's maybe. see. This is not Gawan, there, there's Gawan. This was like touring That's in the bus. That's a beautiful picture. <laughs> tired, tired and the busy. The reality <laughs> of touring. This is with the chiefs in Takradi, the, the Fra Fra chiefs. Maybe we can just keep it at, at the picture with the chiefs and uh, give the word to Guy Wan so he can talk a bit more specifically about his instrument and his music. Because um, Max, you said on stage last night that uh, this is a solo instrument and he played it for the first time in that type of, of ensemble situation. And Guy Wan, you told me that it is, yes, a solo instrument, but you also have uh, situations where different Coloro players come together and have a kind of battle or a kind of dueling. And I would like to know from you what happens when you have these dueling situations, musical the competition. Hello? It's going. Yeah. The Congo are Nerai Lamwe. To to yet the tambo me the yata ene zui but we are wooding hamona the conwen bala pani wa the langwen so langa the tam inga home ngazi home England bank the home yang be by England the tam bank the kanangwen la la ana songa ah I was saying poor zui tumbo a Ghana la zana la ba hante ti ba yile tu wa be te tu de ezia ba hamba hat ma hande invest ne ro wa yor ka kule tu le de na traditional war 2012 mande ka ba bi bin la mande ka so ba la ngate ma bang ti te ba ta bang ti te abon ngane de ra ma men ni ti ma ngane ne ro ba la ni ti te mi ti te ma ngane I was told that the people who were living in the world were living in the world. I was told that the people who were living in the world were living in the world. They were living in the world. They were living in the world. They were living in the world at the same time. They were living in the same time. Apart from the people who were living in the world. So I was told that the people who were living in the world were living in the world. Gawan uh, says, it's really that is a solo instrument, but it happens sometimes that they have like a lot of musicians playing at the same time, and like a competition, and it's the public or the, the reaction also from the people that means that really direct the, 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 the decision. And sometimes when you are like two musicians playing the same time, you can play the same time, but not the same song. And 
you can also follow your, your partner playing and just try to, to improve more than him and people that are listening. Uh, act when the, the words comes because people comes uh, uh, it's the message that they, when they sing it's message that they're communicating. Okay, so the audience is communicating by voice back but to the musicians? It, yeah. Okay. And the reaction of the, the public always direct and it was uh, when uh, Ghana Music Award like, come kind of 2012. And he was in a competition in 2012 uh, with traditional music, and he was the winner of uh, Ghana. Ghana. Ghana 2012. Okay. Traditional Wonderful. music. Wonderful. Yeah. I was in the group to in Ghana. I was and sometimes when there is a competition and he feels like when he, he plays, he's the first person to play. After he plays, the others want to play. All the public are going. They leave. After he plays, all the public goes. Because so he's always the last to play? Yeah, no, he's... He wished to be the last, but when he plays the first, because <laughs> everybody is waiting to listen to him. So okay. when he plays, after him, no more spectators. Everybody is wow, going. That's yeah. <laughs> and it's from the public, not from him. So he thought that he's really one of the best. That's very impressive. Thank you. We will hear some of your music uh, later on in the talk. I would like to ask Friederike first. We've been talking about a little bit uh, about the practical um, situations of music making and the dynamics with the audiences. Um, the partnership with Africa Foundation is part of the Comenga program. Yes. And I quote from the um, website Comenga.net. The idea behind Comenga is dedicated commitment to ensure strong, sustainable, and long-term eye-level German-African partnerships. The program was developed with the partnership with the Africa Foundation uh, and is being implemented under the auspices of the Africa Initiative of the German Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development. Comenga is a three-year education and civic engagement program aimed at strengthening of the crucial role of civil societies in devising bottom-up solutions to common problems in Germany and Africa. We seek to do this by building on ideas and solutions that have been devised by the people for the people while taking the respective contexts into consideration. Uh, very um, uh, promising words and uh, the Federal Ministry for Economic Cooperation and Development um, work on their website with claims like side by side with the poorest, development policy with a profit, fighting poverty, healthy developments, more education, more democracy, more participation. We want all people to be masters and owners of their own lives. Um, how do these guidelines translate into your day-to-day -day practice as the person in charge of cultural projects, Friederike? Arts and culture are number seven in a list of nine areas um, of Kumenga, and why arts and culture, and why music? Oh yes, the partnership with Africa Foundation is doing projects in nine different areas, that's true, but they are not ranking like from number one to number nine, so arts and culture is not number seven on okay. the list. <laughs> we, we do projects in different areas um, because what we believe is that the best way to build partnerships is to bring together people with similar interests, to bring together people who like to make music, to bring together people who play sports, who develop media, who have some kind of business, or to bring together students, to bring together teachers, so people who have um, similar interests in their respective contexts, in their respective backgrounds. So this, we believe, is the easiest way to really build partnerships that could be long-lasting and that could really work. 
not to bring together people where one teaches the other, but, but where there is already like an eye level from the beginning. Okay, and what does this mean for your daily work? How do you implement this? Or what does it mean when you make decisions about who to invite or who, whose suggestion to accept? What does it mean to implement these um, goals and guidelines on a daily basis for you in your work? Well, on a daily basis, what we do is we, um, we do different kinds of projects where we would like to bring together experts and people who are very interested in certain areas. We do research on that. We do um, analysis. We ask more people. We try to reach an audience as wide as possible. We mm -hmm. like not to choose who would be the best to invite, but to make it possible for everyone to join into our um, events and then see how projects can be developed there. So we don't develop projects like from our from our ideals first, but we get people together so that they can develop projects that they are interested in. Mm -hmm. So bring together African people and German people from different countries, of course, in Africa, but who have some kind of common interest and then see what kind of projects they would like to develop. And then we see if this fits the guidelines, then we, we're gonna continue. Okay, so does it matter where the money comes from? Does it matter where the money comes from? Yeah, the <laughs> I don't quite understand the question. Um, uh, or in which way is the the the, the fact that the um, German Ministry of Development is providing the money translating into the actual cultural production? Well, we, yeah. Does it or does it is it not relevant? Yeah, in a big framework, it's relevant, of course, because um, our whole program is funded by the ministry. We, yeah, we developed this program, we um, introduced it at the ministry, and we got funded for this program. But on a on a small level, on a project level, we don't seek like the approval of the ministry every single time for every single person we're collaborating with. Okay. So, so it, on a day-to-day -day, uh, level, it doesn't translate as much. It translates because we have we have the the ideals and the guidelines that you read, mm -hmm. and we have this general idea of bringing together people from the civil society, of uh, fostering engagement, of fostering education, of yeah building par long-lasting partnerships. So that those are our goals. Those okay. are our goals. Those are the goals of the ministry. So that's something we share, and that translates, of okay. course. Okay. Thank you. Klale, how does it matter for you where the money comes from? Uh, money is money, ne? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, idealistically, when one thinks of a, of a project, uh, anyone who can support the project, yes, they are, they are welcome. But at the same time, uh, as artists, sometimes, let's say, you wa I want to do a, a project, then the project has to be funded by a certain political movement. And uh, basically, now, what the, now you have to ask yourself as an artist or an organizer, now, because they are giving me this money to do this project, what does it mean? What should I give back to them? And uh, if it means that I have to sell uh, my soul uh, in order for them, in order for me to do this project for me, then that money I can, I can never accept. Okay, you'd rather go hungry. Yeah, okay. I'd rather not do the project than mm -hmm. get money from from a from an organization that I will uh, not put this, the, the project that I'm doing or my, the association that I'm with uh, into that will give it a bad name in okay. in society and uh, yeah. Okay, thank you. So it matters. Okay, thank you. It does matter. Okay, guy one. 
In your village, how do musicians finance their lives? Is there a patronage system? Uh, do they gain uh, money from playing? Or are they sponsors? Specifically from him. Sometimes he gain money from when he's praying, and he gain it from people because when you pray in funerals, you can get money from them. But sometimes you need to to make like to reduce your produce your your your, your music, but you don't have uh, any support, no money to for to to produce your your music. A budget. Yeah, but they have a lot of songs, they improve, but no financial support to to be seen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I think it's a good moment to hear the Kuloho now. I would love to hear some of your music, Guy mm. One. Do you feel like playing a little bit for us? Yeah? Yeah? It would be very beautiful. Yeah. Or do you want to
would you like to say something about that song? He has a lot of songs because of the time. But if you need something more, he can just play something again for you. Okay, maybe we can uh, uh, chat a little bit and then open the floor and then uh, maybe there's more time to play because it's really very, very beautiful and it's nice to change between talking so much and actually listening to the music. Is there something that he'd like to say about that song? Et Yala la nyor mala ndeb bahla dana de la wapa bi ni nga wili likma ba tenne so man serbe max la manya te selete abate manira tener ba bangra mo so this song talk about when he was born he faces a lot of difficulty in his life and he one day he pray and thought that god says him that one day something will be better for him. And the time he met Max, he think that that's really the gate is now open for him. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. That was very beautiful. Uh, okay. Time is running fast and we want to open the floor to engage with the audience. Um, so I'm running a last round of questions. Again, I would like to um, ask you with um, fantasy scenarios. Friederike, one scenario. I'm an experimental electronic music producer from Berlin, and I'm in touch with this awesome beat maker from Addis Abeba, and uh, we're communicating per email, per Facebook, we're sending each other's beats, and I want to spend time with her in the same place and time to work on our album and ideally promote a touring. How do I approach you best to realize this plan? What do you need from me, pragmatically? I'm the wrong address, I would say. Okay, why? Because I'm not a music promoter. I'm not, I'm not a music industry. I would bring you together for collaboration. Maybe if you could explain to me how this could be multiplying, how this could reach a a wider audience, how this could create something very new and yeah, specific that could really change the image of or the perception of Germans the, that Germans have about Africa or that Africans have about Germany, if there is some kind of civil society engagement there. So if we could make it in a way that um, people could join the project not just as an audience and not just by buying music, yeah. What so. would that be, running a workshop? Running workshops, maybe um, engaging youth, maybe going into schools and like presenting different kinds of collaborations and... Would yeah. it make sense to address different areas from the nine items of the nine areas that you work in schools and, or do you not mix them? Well, no, but this really the whole idea of our project is to bring together people uh, for partnerships to engage civil society. Mm -hmm. So we don't we don't finance single projects by single artists mm -hmm. or single people. We do we develop projects in collaboration mm -hmm. with people who like to do the projects. Okay. Um, and we, we want really an educational part in the whole mm -hmm. thing, so, yeah. Okay, thank you. Max, yes. another scenario. 
I'm a hip hop head from Berlin. Uh, yeah, I'm a hip hop head mm -hmm. from Berlin, and I'm a fan from you back from your funk days. And uh, I know that you work with different different rhythmic patterns and principles of interlocking and repetition. And I want to implement these principles in my production technique together with you. And uh, you're a busy man, so how do I best approach you? What would what, make you want to work with me? Bring a nice piece of cake, come to the <laughs> studio, Okay. have tea, and then, you know, I think, you know, when, when there's sympathy, then the music, you know, it develops itself. If somebody came with enthusiasm, it's more like the energy somebody brings than like the type of music. Okay, so feeling out the vibrations. And yes, feeling. yes. Okay. Okay, different approach. Thank you. <laughs> Guy one. Another scenario. I'm a drum and bass DJ from Accra. And I've discovered your music. I'm very interested in the, in the way you play your instrument. And I want you to play on my album. How... Do I convince you to work with me? How is this going to happen? Te walo inga andi no e nelandi e e yonu me. Tinga wapa inga honyo na tonyo na ansonga. Tinga boto po ona inga lanta ba lanye he yona yela inga inga ne pa. La ansong a po de be mbo kala ti mambo na bilewa la zame la taba ya re to la mbo na la zin ayela la ye la enan mbo ti mambala la asuru wa enge si ti la me en ma po pelo de ti la enge bon la la sing sa ju de mbo kala Mamona Gana, Mankang Bang, La Balla, and see. Well, I in Ambon, I crat on Bonabola. Eh, Langon. Eh, and there one bona crat, my bonabono. Our pal, my ing away, is Salabuma. Lameng song of Buma, Timendic Popilu. Bacaton tone to dear cannabin to a potato bona depot. Eh, Gawan says, First of all, when you want you. You are interesting to his music, and you want to make like a al album, and you figure on it. If you are very far, and you are interested, you have to come to him and make some proposition that he will f and see, and he will realize that uh, this proposition is okay, like financial, because when you need him to move, you have to support all the financials. I understand. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thank you. Klale, another scenario. I'm a musicologist from Berlin, and uh, I have access to recordings of South African traditional music here through music archives that are not available in South Africa. And um, I want to work with you based on this material. How, how do I best approach you? Is it even possible to approach you or are you the person who's picking the collaborators? Uh, naturally, I would say I'm one of the easiest people to come across. Okay. Uh, <laughs> but at the same time, if it's about uh, music from my home then that's music from my heart uh, before you finish the statement I'll, I'll be saying yes then after that we can be talking about uh, the logistics mm -hmm. and of course uh, the question that you're asking is it's it's actually practical because we have lots of music from south africa and everywhere in the world in the archives uh, all over the world, so uh, and most of the m m most of that music is music that you never hear now. 
even in Africa or yeah or South Africa and most of that music has become instinct because with generations things fade away with uh, the all the old music staying with the old people. When the, when the old people die, the music dies, then the youth never continues with that music. And given that musicologies, I'll address my hand quickly. <laughs> okay, interesting. Thank you all um, for your thoughts and for coming along uh, with my silly questions today. I would like to open the floor now um, to the audience. Um, can we organize some microphones for the audience? Thank you. Wonderful. So I think there's a question here already. No? no Are there questions from the audience to the panel members? OK. Oh, there is one. Yes, there in the back, a raised hand. Hello, uh, my name is Mo. I am a booking agent uh, based here in Berlin. Uh, I am uh, into a totally different uh, kind of music uh, than what you are doing, or I'm into, into uh, experimental electronics. But uh, I know some uh, of the uh, musicians who already went to uh, Africa, like Gebruder Teichmann, uh, Andy and Hannes Teichmann, or uh, Schneider. Um, so the, I know some electronic artists uh, who already collaborated uh, in Africa. Uh, and my question is, uh, how do you um, um, how do you get involved when um, people from, especially now Germany, are approaching um, you guys? I mean, how is it working? How uh, how do you get in touch? Um, I mean, we are mainly now talking about how the Germans are approaching, how the Germans are financing, but I would like to uh, hear more about uh, how you are uh, connecting with them. I mean, how is it happening? This is something that I still don't know. Thank you, Mo. Um, who would like to answer first? Lali, you sighed. Uh, yeah, basically, both like me and Bent Friedman, we we are coming from different uh, different worlds, uh, musically and uh, just normally. Uh, the way he thinks, the way I think, and uh, that's what make our collaboration beautiful. But uh, at the same time, as much as uh, our hearts would love to, to make things easy, sometimes it's never easy because from my side, I need to really understand where he's coming from as much as he has to do that. Uh, but the only, I guess the only defining line is, do I have patience to learn from him or do I have patience to teach him, or vice versa? Uh, for me, him as a musician and a composer, he's one of the brilliant uh, musicians German has ever produced, uh, electronically speaking and otherwise. And the, but the most important thing between us, or rather to me, I can only continue collaborating or working with a musician if we connect, if our vibe connects, if our heart connects, if we feel each other. Because if I cannot feel you, then our music, our signage can never happen. Uh, our combination, if we don't feel each other, our combination then can only produce something that people can never listen to or whatever we can produce. It's, it's going to be like what I call artist, artistical vomits. So our connection is very important. So and I how, find him good, cool. but how does that connection? How is it made in the first place? Was that the question, Mo? How do people uh, reach out to um, um, musicians that are not from the continent or not from their country? 
How is the initial, initial step made? Okay. Basically, when he came to South Africa, because he was uh, doing an African tour, uh, one of the guys who works at the Guta Institute in, in Johannesburg, we, he, he knew me from back, back when, and uh, then he thought of the other percussionists. Then he said, hey, he has this uh, German, German musician, and uh, seemingly he's one of the crazy ones. And uh, he needs another crazy one, uh, so he he gave me he gave me a call and, and and we checked the dates and the dates were cool and that's how it got on. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, basically, it's it's who if you are in the right place in the right space and you know the right person, it gets there. Sometimes. A good musician comes, and the wrong a wrong person is recommended to that person, and uh, you find that when the person goes back to their country, he goes with a bad reputation that the people in the in that space or in that other country they cannot play. Only to find that the people who recommended the other musician they did not really understand what the other guy wanted. Then. When the other person goes back, it's like people in South Africa or anywhere in that country cannot play, whereas the recommendation, the recommendation was bad. So it's very important to have the right recommendation. Yeah. So you're saying the connections made through a reference system, people know each other and recommend each other, rather than one musician seeking out another foreign musician. It's basically what I'm saying. Be, if you, you 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 will need someone to recommend from any any place in a place you're going to, you you have to make sure that, or rather that other person has to make sure that they really understand what the other mu musician wants because they can easily get the wrong person for that. Not necessarily that they they can they are not good players. They are not suitable musicians to play together. They have to make the right match. Exactly. Okay. Making the right matches. Had you, did you have experiences where people reached out to you while you were traveling or otherwise from African countries? No, it mostly was my curiosity that all the contacts came together. I went to Ghana the first time um, and visit Ebo Taylor because he was producing a record here in Berlin at the Love Light, so I met him. So I had a first person to meet, and then I called Mustafa Tete Ali, a master drummer from Ghana, I lived here in Germany, and he did records in the 70s. I had some of those records, and because of internet, luxury internet times, I just found his contact, called him, so I met him. And I my first contacts, and I traveled through the country. So I met Gawan, I met in, in the north, I met people in the jungle, I met people on the west coast, on the east coast. Interesting. So it, it's just first you come there like, like Tabula Rasa, mm -hmm. and then suddenly, especially with, with Gawan, if, if in, in the northern part, just meeting Gawan, I had from the one to the next moment contacts to at least 50 great musicians. So it's the reference system that Lali was talking about. Yeah, because they are really like a community. Everybody knows everybody. Mm -hmm. And he's, he's, the, he's the master, so he knows all other masters. And, and he introduced me to them. So yes. it came together. Okay, thank you. Guy one, is it important for you to reach out to international musicians or is it more important to connect locally? What is what you usually do? Mm. Mm -hmm. 
bon la hoka yi ba yiru wana to kena na mawe habini so la toma je ngo tin mi tre seba it's very really difficult to meet uh, the others international musician yeah. i mean it also depends on being able to travel financially and also in terms of visa so it's yeah. a totally different logistical situation yeah. you know. <laughs> thank you all um any more questions from the audience i am personally very very grateful for all of you to come here to take the time to come here um, um, Master Pakashan is from South Africa. Tia, who translated for us, uh, for us very kindly. Guy Won from Ghana, Koko, Kolochum player, who played last night. Uh, Tlali will be on stage tonight with Bernd Friedman at the Badehaus. Max Weisenfeld, the man behind the Polyversal Souls. And uh, what's the name of your label again? Philophone, watch out for the guy one album to come this autumn. Thank you very much. And Friederike Clausen, who came up with the ideas collaborati collaboratively for this panel and also for the Africa Music Convention as part of the Berlin Music Week. Thank you all very much. Do you have one last word to say? Yeah. Uh, in closing, basically, thank you very much for, thank you to the organizers for inviting us here. And uh, one of the most important things with uh, collaborations or cooperations is that, okay, fine, it's, it, it's all well and done that uh, whether a musician from Germany or anywhere in the West or the East the, or Africa, anywhere that we meet and we do the music and the music is beautiful. I think uh, at the same time, what we need to, we need to do, helped by the organizations around that sometimes when we, what I've seen, especially in South Africa, uh, okay, me, I, I know some information on copyright and all that stuff. Uh, but then the other guys, they don't know that thing, the, that information and the music ownership and where to go to register and all that. I think organizations that help collaborate these two, two musicians that can go or wherever they may be. I think a case of uh, an education about copyright and ownership, where do people register music and all that. The second thing is that sometimes when these collaborations, they, they work one way. And uh, they, can, they can work for a guy, he comes to, he comes to South Africa and, and it's all good people people know the music in south africa or the, or because people know clearly in south africa then the music is nice but then when it comes back to to europe then it no it doesn't happen or it doesn't happen in south africa or it happens in europe so we need to find a way that how do we make both people uh, that help each other if the Afri the south african guy who is clearly collaborating with a german guy how does he get uh, pushed in the other in the other in the other area that he doesn't know and the other guy on the other side i think when we collaborate we have to look on those areas as well thank you are you saying thank you that people should be addressing each other's blind spots basically thank you okay okay <laughs> anyone else would like to add something before we wrap up okay i like also to thank for the invitation of gawan coming here and have the opportunity to bring his music here on stage. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you all. <laughs> and uh, maybe it's a good moment for a little bit more music. Would you like to play more? Are you in the mood? You want to hear over? Thank you. <laughs>
Say this sounds means when you are together, there are a lot of people who doesn't want you to talk the truth. And when you talk the truth, it means like it's like nails. That is, I don't know uh, the words, the good words in English, uh, points in French, like nails. Yeah, so when you speaking the truth, it's like nails. So a lot of people hate it because they don't like when you're talking truth to them. And that's the meaning of this song. Yeah. I just, I just wanted to add, if you want to hear some more great musical collaborations, come tonight to the Bade House Simpla. Uh, start, doors open at 10 o'clock, and there will be Tlala Makene with Bernd Friedman. There will be the Brothers Teichmann with Psychotectonic from uh, Zimbabwe. And there will be a Kamel Zoom with um, Christoph Lindner from Berlin. And it's going to be great. Please come. <laughs> 